All right, everyone, thanks for joining us once again. So I'm spending some time with Tom Robinson from the Johnstone Supply Grimmy Group. Tom, how's it going? Doing good, man. So thank you for inviting me over. We're looking at some A2L refrigerant installation. You've done a fantastic job of putting together an A2L mitigation training board. So we actually have a live A2L mitigation mm -hmm. system hooked up with a Daikin R32 system. And so we're going to show what the mitigation control is actually going to do once it meets that lower flammability limit where it detects enough refrigerant to go into mitigation. So we keep talking about this, but we've never actually seen what it's going to do. So theoretically, what should happen if our sensor detects a refrigerant leak in the system? So once our refrigerant sensor detects that leak in the system, yep. it's going to power down the uh, gas furnace. Mm -hmm. It's going to power down the outdoor unit. Mm -hmm. It's going to engage the blower motor for ventilation. Yeah, in that system. dissipate the gases. Once that gas is all dissipated and it no longer detects refrigerant, it's going to stay in that mitigation mode for about five minutes. Yep. And then once that's completed, it'll go back to normal operation. Okay. So let's, uh, let's see how fast this reacts. So in one of my previous videos on flammable refrigerants, I did a, a testing of A1, A2, A2L, and A3 refrigerants. We have with us today our A1, A2, and A2L. We're going to go ahead and use this A2L. And I want everyone to know that we're not actually using regulated refrigerants. We're using aerosols that are exempt from Section 608 of the Clean Air Act. So... We, uh, we actually don't lose our license <laughs> for doing some testing with these non-regulated chemicals. Correct. But the 1234YF in this yellow dust-off is the same as our R1234YF, which we use in automotive, and we're blending with R32 to create R454B. So let's go ahead and give it us a try, see how fast this responds, and see what our actions are. You want to do the Absolutely. honors? Absolutely. Love to. Okay, so we're going to introduce some R1234YF in vapor form into the cavity. And already, our RDS sensor has detected the refrigerant. So you can see the flashes. So it's going, okay, we need to go into mitigation mode. So within 30 seconds, it should shut off the outdoor unit, should shut off the gas furnace if it was running, and we'll turn on the blower Correct. within 30 seconds. And so we've dissipated the gases. We had a small leak. We're not... We're See, not recognizing we're refrigerant already. It already stopped detecting refrigerant, and now yep. we're just in that five-minute lockout. Absolutely. So the homeowner complaint would be, hey, my blower kicks on, and then it comes back on later. About five minutes later, it comes back on. And What's nothing is on? running heating or cooling. Mm -hmm. And go, oh, well, we probably got a we'll, mitigation we'll scenario. Mitigation Let's come take situation. a look at that. And we would have an error code on our mitigation control board, which is a separate component for non-communicating right. systems. If it is a communicating system, many of our manufacturers have incorporated that into the communicating control board. So then at that point, it's just a matter of the sensor on the cabinet. Just adding into the process what makes or breaks. Yeah, very simple. That's it. Cool. I appreciate you joining me, Tom. Anytime, man. Thanks, dude. Okay, Tom. So we have went through our five-minute mitigation period correct our blower is reset mm -hmm. we're not detecting a refrigerant so we're basically just in idle mode mm -hmm. we've tested it with 1234 yf and our refrigerant detection sensor went into mitigation how about we try another refrigerant just out of curiosity i like it let's do it all right so the red can is actually 134 a so let's see now remember this is an a1 this is not an mm -hmm. a2l refrigerant it's an a1 but i have a theory that we're actually testing for fluorinated chemicals so let's see if we're actually going to set off our refrigerant leak detector with 134A, an A1 classified chemical. Oh, I see some changes. There we have it. Okay. And then so, within 30 seconds, we start our in, uh, blower motor. Exactly. Again. So we're going to, uh, I'm going to work with some of our refrigerant detection sensor manufacturers and see what we're actually testing for. Like I said, I have a theory. I mean, we, we have to be testing for fluorine, mm -hmm. hydrogen, or carbon. That's One an HFC chemical. But we're actually detecting it with our A1 gas as well as our A2L. Mm -hmm. Pretty interesting. I mean, if we yeah. can make it across the board, a refrigerant sensor is going to work across the board. Exactly. If it works in that application, the end result is the same thing. It would make sense that it would detect any refrigerant. Yeah, because we've been using refrigerant leak detection mm -hmm. sensors in commercial applications for decades. Well, they're required so they can, for the same purpose. Exactly, for mitigation. Displacement. Absolutely. So if we look at it, we probably set the parameters for the lower flammability limit on our control board, mm -hmm. but the refrigerant detection sensor is literally a refrigerant detection sensor. Just a refrigerant sensor. That's it. I love it. Now we got to tear it apart and see how the thing actually works. Yeah, that sounds fun. All right. I like that part. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. 
The ESCO Group is the premier provider for A2L and low GWP training resources. Learn more at escogroup.org.